Hi guys, today I'm going to talk about estimating engine horsepower from wheel horsepower. So first a little bit of theory and then we're going to jump into the software of yourdyno.com. So here are the various loss components, let's take a look at that first. So we have a bunch of things here that we can call drivetrain losses, that's the gearbox a loss, and the differential loss and the various drive shafts. Then we have tire losses in addition. Now of course, if you have a roller-based dyno, if you have a hub dyno, there is no tire losses. And here is a simple equation then. Engine power equals wheel power, and this is what we measure, plus the drivetrain losses, plus the tire losses. And the trick is really to try to estimate these two components here as best as possible, so that we get the engine power as accurately as possible. Okay, first thing to note here is that losses increase with speed and with power. So what does that mean? Well, it means that this 15% rule is very approximate. This 15% rule uh, says that uh, engine power equals wheel power plus 15%. And that's a very common, uh, very common equation. You don't need to use 15%, it could be 18 or 12, whatever you, you think is correct for your setup. Um, and it's perfectly fine to use this if you do engine tuning. When you do engine tuning, you only want to know whether the new tune was better or worse than before, uh, and that's basically it. If you are really after as accurate engine power numbers as possible, then we have to do a little bit more than, than this uh, uh, equation here. We see that this equation doesn't include this anything around the speed, so it, at best, it can be only correct at one particular speed. Uh, so it's a bit too simplistic if you want to know engine power in a bit more detail. Okay, so what can the dyno do uh, better? So we can do uh, this, the following. So estimated engine power equals the measured wheel power. Again, that's the same as we, as we measured, um, the same as we measure here basically plus the measured unloaded speed losses. Okay, uh, this is when the engine reaches max uh, RPM, clutch goes in and you measure the drag during the coast down phase. Now what's very important to note here is that this is the unloaded losses. So this means we know that the losses will be higher than that at full load, especially if you have a powerful car. So if you only use these two um, pieces here to calculate engine power, you will have a too low um, engine power because the losses are higher than what we can measure here during unloaded uh, retardation. So we need to add a fixed power loss percentage in addition. This is basically what we have here, right? So what we are doing is that we do a coast the coast down losses plus we add a fixed percentage like that. Uh, of course, the, the trick here is to know what kind of percentage shall we put and that's why I put it in red there is no way to measure that you just have to put a number that uh, may be uh, correct or maybe over or underestimated and you use your best judgment to find the right number but this uh, equation will be better than this one here okay so that's that let's look a little bit at tire losses so that's pretty interesting tire rolling resistance. So here is a figure where you can see the loss uh, versus speed. So the first thing to see to notice is that as speed increase the losses increase and not only that but they don't increase linearly so they get progressively worse as speed increases. That's interesting. Actually some tires they are relatively, uh, you know, uh, flat, and then at a certain percent, a certain speed, they really, really increase in their losses. So, make sure not to use uh, crappy tires when you dyno your car, right? The other thing to notice is that the losses are very dependent on the tire pressure. As you can see, one bar here, and this is four bars. A big, big difference. Make sure you don't underinflate your tires when you want to test them. The third thing to notice is that this is what's called the coefficient of rolling resistance. So what does that mean? Well, the loss, here is the equation, the loss equals this coefficient times the load. So the load is the load on those driven uh, wheels uh, when you do your dyno run. 
Okay. So let's put them all together here because there are a bit more factors actually than what I just mentioned. The loss is dependent upon the speed, clearly we can see that in some complex fashion. Uh, it's dependent on tire pressure very clearly. Um, another component here is the tire compound and the thread makes a difference as well. Wheel and roller diameter we, uh, makes also a difference. Smaller rollers means more loss. Temperature is another one. So a little bit higher temperature in the tires is good. That means less loss up to a certain point, I suppose. And then we have load. Load comes in, in here, right? In this, uh, this uh, equation here. And how, what is load really? <coughs> well, it's the weight of the car on those driven wheels plus the strap down force so the harder you strap down the car the more loss you will have in your in your tires plus and there's a piece in red here because we can't measure it plus the effective load from the power what do i mean by that well if you look at the car under full power especially powerful cars they are kind of climbing up on the on the uh, dyno a little bit or trying to you can see it uh, the, the suspension getting uh, pushed down from from the power and being held back by the by the strap down so this effectively puts a load on the tires as well which we cannot uh, which we don't measure during the coast down phase wheel torque so how much power you have basically also plays a role higher torque in your uh, in your tire means more loss and finally the slip Believe it or not, no, not there's a bit of slip in your tires, even when you don't sort of see see slip. You need a little bit of slip. And these three pieces here, they are all dependent upon uh, the load to some extent, also about how you how you tie down your car. But they are not measurable. That's why they are in red. And these other pieces here, they are either measurable during the coast down phase, or they are considered to be uh, uh, constant. Okay, so that's pretty complicated, a bit easier if you have a hub dyno. But uh, let's see how we can deal with this inside uh, your dyno's uh, software. So let's test the various options using a hub dyno first. So first we go to options and then horsepower correction. And then we have the two uh, options here. This is the losses from the coast down phase. If you enable this one, you get uh, the speed losses in the coast down phase. And then over here is the power correction factor. Now let's first do this standard 15% loss and see how that goes. So no speed correction, only power correction. Now I have already done uh, a run, so I'm going to just uh, load it, load the raw log file. It's going to take a second or so. And then we can save, and here we go. This, uh, let's turn on also the, the torque. Here we have um, engine uh, engine power here and wheel power and this is engine torque and wheel torque. Obviously, there is now always a 15% difference all along here uh, since that's what we have put. Okay, uh, let's do another test. Let's turn on this uh, losses from the speed losses from the coast down phase and we put zero on the power correction factor. See how that goes. Only purely, we are adding purely the unloaded uh, losses from the coast down phase. Okay, and we now select new run plus record new retardation data. And we run with the same file as before. So let's see what we get. Well, let me just turn off the, the torque. We can look at horsepower only. What we see is that in the beginning at low speed uh, the loss is much less than 15% so it's maybe like 5% or something while up here at the max max it's maybe like 7-8% something like that. However we know that this uh, curve here uh, is only corrected for unloaded losses so there will be more loss than that so we can add that and uh, we can here guess here is the trick really what is the right number right so let's just put 10 and we can agree or disagree whether that's a good number but let's go with that and we run again and 
we get this now what we see is that um, in the uh, in the beginning here the 15% flat uh, loss plus this 10% uh, plus correction for speed actually fits pretty well for a while and then as speed increases uh, the, the one which includes the speed correction uh, has a higher loss than the 15% flat uh, correction so that is uh, kind of as we would expect it looks looks quite uh, good i think um let's see how it looks for a roller based dyno so there we will get also the tire losses in addition to the transmission losses i have loaded the um, settings of a roller based dyno so let's do the same now with, with that the dyno. Okay, so we got the horsepower correction again. We turn off uh, the speed correction and we put this flat 15% power correction and see the results there. Okay. We can load a stored data uh, file, so raw data file uh, from a run we did earlier. Okay, let me save it. So this is the engine power and uh, engine torque. We can take a look at the wheel power and torque as well. And as, as you would imagine, there is a 15% difference between them. Okay, what happens if we now enable the speed correction from the retardation phase? Remembering now that we also include the tire losses. Okay, we do a new retardation run. Press record new retardation data and we load the same file. Okay, do you think it's higher or lower than 15%? We will see. Okay, so let's uh, remove the uh, torque, it's a bit much. Okay, we see at low RPMs or low speeds, the loss is less than 15, but it's still quite a lot, it's maybe 10 or something. And they cross here at about 10.2 uh, K uh, RPM and a higher speed means higher loss than 15 percent maybe here uh, at max uh, engine power the loss is i don't know maybe 15 this is 15 so maybe 20 or 18 or something like that and we know that this is not even the the, the correct this is underestimated right because this is unloaded so we need to add power loss in addition maybe 10 percent it's maybe too much or uh, or not, you may agree or disagree. Let's try with 15, with 10%. Let's see how that goes. Okay, so as we can see here, already at low, uh, our lowish RPM, then the loss is maybe this is 15, this is maybe 20, right? And up at the max power the loss in this case would be something like 30 percent this may be too much so this maybe i shouldn't have corrected with 10 maybe i should have corrected with 5 this is always going to be difficult to know but this is an, an a motorcycle based car that didn't have very good tires it didn't have the right uh, slicks uh, tires that we typically use on the track it had some other tires that we just had laying around that was big enough to to fit on the on the dyno Plus, we know that the, the, the motorcycle chain at very high speeds has quite a lot of loss. And it also has a wet clutch. The wet clutch has some drag. So maybe this is correct. Uh, maybe it should be 5 instead of 10, right? And it would end up at 25%. Uh, at who knows? It is, uh, anyway, quite high. But these are the numbers that you can play with. And uh, the setup you can play with. And uh, it's up to you to, to decide a good... A good number here okay I wanted to show you one more thing so you can see from these um, these uh, speed corrected runs that we have something going on here there's also a little bit of uh, seem to be a little bit of noise over here plus what's what's this step here okay so let's uh, we, we can see it actually right from uh, that we, we do take this one first we only did retardation until we came down to 7400 rpm we didn't bother to wait all the way down to the starting rpm that's why at this point there is no retardation data so uh, there is no way to correct here 
this here looks to be some, some noise uh, from this area here and here there is a bump this is clearly not uh, real in a way I mean the engine is not uh, uh, engaged at this moment the clutch is in maybe the guy uh, at the wheel pu pushed the, the throttle for a bit and since this has a, a wet clutch maybe that's what happened here it reduced the drag a little bit I don't know but uh, we can get rid of it and I'll show you how so there is now a new uh, option maybe you noticed new run using stored retardation data so when you do a retardation data like we have done here we store the retardation and not only that but we store a mathematical representation of it so this uh, retardation um, curve follows a second order polynomial and uh, with some mathematical tricks we can uh, store that polynomial and use that rather than the actual data and as you will see this this can get rid of the crap like that it we can also uh, calculate what is the loss below uh, where you stopped recording your retardation data and even above right if you next run go a thousand rpm higher you will still have retardation data for that so that's good the other very good thing is that you don't need to do a retardation run when you have stored retardation and that's okay because uh, it's a little bit uh, uh, boring to sit and wait for the retardation to finish when this can take you know 40 seconds maybe or something like that depending on uh, the, how heavy your rollers are okay so let's see how this goes we do then <coughs> new run using stored retardation data and we then we do the same uh, as before, same file as before. Okay, so let me remove those other pieces so we can only compare the two, the two last ones. So first thing to notice is that there is no step here anymore. Uh, the new the 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 curve that uses the, the stored retardation data follows completely like you would expect also we have gotten rid of this um, piece uh, this noise that we see down here we have gotten rid of the effect of that and we have gotten rid of the, the problem area over here pretty cool right now let's get rid of the second to last run and return on the engine torque engine power this is the final result now we can see that there is still the retardation phase here we can get rid of it of course you normally don't do the retardation phase when you have uh, when you use the stored retardation data so this is just because we we run the same uh, the same log file as before so here we go okay hope you liked it uh, this is a controversial subject how to uh, estimate uh, horsepower from uh, engine horsepower from wheel horsepower so leave your comments uh, if you agree or disagree with what you saw here today thanks a lot